Hey guys, welcome back to what is now week 5 of the Multi-Battle League. Of course, I am joined by my trusty partner Baz. Hello. And this week we are up against quite the challenge. We're going up against Team Not Scald, okay, Not Scald, aka Joey and MV, who actually knocked us out of the semifinals last year uh, in a really, really intense game, actually. So, definitely looking to get our revenge. They're actually the only undefeated team left in the league, and Baz and I haven't had the best start in the NBL, so we're really looking to get a win against the best team in the league right now and uh, prove that our record doesn't really necessarily show our team strength. But it's going to be an uphill battle here for sure. Yeah, it feels like this is sort of do or die right now, doesn't it? Right, even though we still got, I think, like, what, six weeks after this. So, yeah. <laughs> really need to start getting those wins. I think the first three weeks, we were, the losses, obviously, we didn't want to take, but they weren't the end of the world. Uh, but this last week, that was definitely a wake-up call where it feels like Baz and I both were just completely out of it and just were playing way below our standards. So, we're hoping to have a good game. Obviously, we'd really, really like a win, but um, at least just... You know, put up more of a fight than we did last week since that was honestly kind of a pathetic showing. But uh, we've got some cool tricks up our sleeve this time around. Joey and MV, I think, have drafted uh, one of the scariest combinations possible in the league. Like the Mew, Snorlax, and Phoenicore is really, really difficult to break through. So we'll see how we deal with that. But, Can you hear um, me? So I just put in there. Sorry? Can you hear me? Yes. No, oh, good. You seem to be like, cutting up a little bit at my end. But hopefully when we get into the battle, it works. Oh, man. <laughs> Reminiscent of uh, some of the older days. So, okay. There's no Serena, and there's no something else. Uh, let's see, let me quickly pulling up. No Ariados? Yeah. Okay. So, I don't think there's any surprise there, really. Yeah, not really. So let's just get these, these notes down. See, look. New. It's hard on time. So maybe they haven't, maybe they're not bringing Scrafty then. Yeah. Okay, so our original plan was to go with Charpedo plus Raichu, which I feel like is still pretty solid here. Yeah, yeah. Um, One thing I was scared of was Mew and Scrafty being on the same side, or different sides, so you could get an Intimidate, but with Scrafty being on the other side, that gives me a little bit more peace of mind. Yeah, yeah, we have come up with a few tricks in between the team builder and now. We've got a very interesting Volcarona with a, a secret move, which hopefully we'll get to do something. And um, this Raichu, um, yeah, actually we did discuss in the team builder. We have actually got Follow Me on this Raichu, so there's no lightning rod. It is the special event uh, Pichu, as it was, from the third generation with Follow Me. So no lightning rod and uh, no fake out on it. So it's going to be a completely different Raichu to what we used before. Yep, I think we're just going to stick with our plan here. Yeah, so Raichu Sharpedo. All right, let's see. And let's keep our fingers crossed. Like, we need something to go our way. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, it's 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 been a rough start for sure, but I know we are good players and I know we can bounce back. Yeah, I'm sure we can. I'm sure we'll, we, we will win some games before the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, ooh, the leading with Talon Flame and Raikou. Ooh, Raikou. So, yeah, the Raikou was a little bit scary. And it is the shiny one, so that might be Rash with Aura Sphere. And the Talon Flame is the same side as Steelix, so they might switch and discharge. That was what I was fearing. Mm -hmm. So, oh, we haven't got Helping Hand and Raichu, have we? Else, I was just going to say double, double Protect and then Helping Hand and try and knock out the Raikou, but um, I don't think that would work either way. Like, Talon Flame surely switches into Steelix. I think so too, yeah. And I think they discharge. I think that's really like the obvious move like they wouldn't lead Raikou knowing that we've got a Raichu without a Steelix on, without um, Discharge on it now I, I could see them protecting if they uh, fear like a fake out and an attack into the Raikou although then Talonflame could just attack Torpedo yes yeah so well, this is tricky then I mean you could, we could try and make the prediction and bring in Nido Queen for the Sharpedo slot yeah, I just that we have to be com confident that Talonflame is switching out here. Yeah, because they'll be expecting a fake out here. Right. I'm okay. I'm okay switching to Talonflame. I think. Or sorry, Needle Queen. Uh, 
Um, but then what do I do? Hmm. I would think maybe just launch a Thunderbolt into Talonflame in case they stay in. Yeah, in case like they're trying Tailwind, I suppose. Yeah. That does make sense. I'm gonna switch out into Needle Queen. Yeah, I mean this is kind of like a, a win-win in a way. If they bring in the Steelix, we've got Needle Queen in. If they don't switch to Talonflame, then we've then we've. Looks like they're uh, staying yeah, in. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Then we've got Thunderbolt into the Talonflame. So it just protects. Okay. And it has to be discharged then, surely. Oh, Snarl. Interesting. Okay. Well, okay then. <laughs> hmm. I'm just going to calculate how much this will do to Raikou. So an Earth Power will do probably about just over half to the Raikou now at minus one. Okay. Minus two, it'll do like 40%. Uh, let me think. I mean, Raikou could have Hidden Power Ice. That's the worst thing, it, I think, the worst thing it can do to maybe hit the Needle Queen. It gets or extra it sensory as well, doesn't it? Extra sensory, yeah. It might be Z extra sensory, think about it. Yeah. Ooh. Um... So maybe what? Follow me and Earth power into Talonflame. Um, are we that confident on Talonflame switching out that we want to Earth power it? Well, Raikou doesn't threaten Raichu in any way, does it? Yeah, but I could see like they if they don't expect Follow me, they could just maybe launch a Brave Bird into Needle Queen and Snarl again. Yeah, perhaps. Or just Flare Blitz the Raichu. Yeah. So I think I could protect and use Thunderbolt Talonflame or. You follow me. But I don't want to reveal follow me yet. Yeah, okay. Protect Thunderbolt does seem safer than my, my wild call there. But, I, I don't know. I think I think they do switch to Talonflame. I think you're right, honestly. I'm going to protect here, though. Okay. I mean... It's, yeah, it's, it's an obvious play. Oh, they don't yeah. switch out. Okay. Okay. I mean, Thunderbolt isn't going to knock out the Talonflame, though. Right, but that's still fine. I mean, <laughs> this is going to be pathetic damage. Oh, well, it's a Z move. Is that fire one? Oh, it is. That might knock out right you. There might be targets in the Needle Queen, though, but... Ooh. I don't know. This is a very, very, very bulky right you. So we'll see how this goes. Oh, it is into right you. Oh, a critical hit. Oh, I, I feel like we definitely survived that. I feel like we survived that too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna calculate that now, just so we know. Oh. Yeah, right, okay. Right, you. Talon Flame. So if it's adamant, Zed Fire does um, 82 to 97. So <laughs> it was a roll. Yeah, lovely. That's frustrating because it would have activated our berry. We would have gotten Thunderbolt. Like it doesn't knock out Talonflame, but it puts it off where I would yeah. think maybe a Sludge Bomb can pick it off. And then we've got Follow Me the next turn. But now the problem is, um, if they're just snarling away, a Hidden Power Rock isn't going to one shot the Talonflame. That's right. I mean, we could double up onto the Talonflame to maybe get a knockout there. Yeah, perhaps. Ah. Not a great way to start the game. I mean, Nido Queen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I do think you bring Volkir out, though. Yeah, I mean, Metagross is just instantly threatened by both of them, isn't it? Yeah. So just just in case, you know, we we haven't mentioned yet, we've got the Cobra Berry on Volcarona, the Flying Resist Berry, um, and Hidden Power Rock on it. So it's kind of like a. You know, a, a, a proper answer to Talonflame, but with the Snarl, it's just throwing the calculations completely out the window. Even if this was, a, even if this was a modest Volcarona, as we were considering, it, a minus one, it wouldn't knock it out still either. So, um, yeah, awkward. I think here they'd probably just Snarl and Brave for Volcarona. Yeah, I think so too. 
But like we will, Volcarina will definitely, definitely survive that. Yeah. Without critical hits. In which case, what are you thinking? Just double into the Talonflame? Yeah, Talonflame could protect though as Raikou goes for like a Thunderbolt into Volcarona. Yeah. But I mean, if you're a Talonflame in this situation, surely you think this is just a free Brave Bird. Yeah. Because like, we can't intimidate it. I'm okay doubling into Talonflame here. With... Yeah, I mean, just like, <laughs> if they switch into Steelix now, <laughs> that would be... Like, worst case scenario. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's kind of risky, though. Yeah, yeah. Snarl was a nice call. Yeah, it's been awkward. I mean, if this is a, a rash Raikou, then it is... Well, actually, it's not. I was going to say it's a speed tie with, with Raichu, but it's not. I'm thinking of something else. Uh, I'm just looking at who I have in the back. You've got Lele and neither. You've got Lele and Sharpie though. Yeah. Um, hmm. Ideally, I want to put everything in range where Sharpedo can kind of just sweep through. Yeah. But I think we should try to knock out Talonflame here. So we're just doubling into it then? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So they are snarling. So they should be losing Talonflame here. But we're definitely on the back foot now. Well, they just play Blitzing. Yeah, I think they're going to target Nido Queen here. Yeah, makes sense. Oh, it's Oh, well, interesting. That, that is as much as a Brave Bird would have done, because that's neutral. And, okay, well, that takes it out without the thing, then. Okay. So we're getting some, some extra chip damage into the Raikou here. Interesting they went for the Flare Blitz. Maybe expecting a double switch into Metagross? Is that Assault Vested, or is that just really bulky? Um... I'll do the calculation, but we are at minus two, aren't we now? Yeah. So minus two, sludge bomb, two, absolute no bulk. Actually, yeah. If that, if that is assault vest, it's like sludge bomb minus two on no bulk does like 30%. That looks like 20%, so that might be assault vested. Hmm. Or just um, invested. Hmm. Okay, now they've got Mew out. They I, feel, do. I feel like we should be switching bulk here. I mean, Nidic Queen is pretty threatened as well. Right. So, so I'm thinking switch. double switch. Yeah. Metagross and... They could Psychic Thunderbolt Needle Queen. So I'm thinking into Lele. And they've Z-moved on that side, so Mew can't Z-move. Yeah, this Raikou is going to be an issue, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, if we if we whittle it down enough so that Waterfall gets it, then we might be okay. But Waterfall, I think Waterfall does like 60% to it. Okay. Well, what, actually, what does Crunch do? Because Crunch does more, doesn't it? Think about it. Um, yeah, Crunch... Actually, Crunch does, if it's no investment at all, Crunch does 90% minimum. Oh, wow. Okay. So if that's not an invested right, we could just knock it out with Crunch. Um, I want to switch Needle Queen out because we need to conserve it for Steelix. Yeah. I'm going to switch into Lele. Yeah, so Lele and Metagross. Okay. In fact, Raikou is possibly in Zed Hammer Arm range, but we might want to keep the Hammer Arm for something else. The Zed Hammer Arm for Ah, it's a shame about that crit. That Raichu is so essential to our plan. Yeah. They didn't even, <laughs> we didn't even get to use the flow mini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Snarling again. Kind of expected that. And just a Zen. It was a physical one. Into, this, into the Metagross. Right. Okay. That was a good turn. Yeah. Hmm. But now, if that's a physical Mew, does it get anything that can threaten Metagross? That's a good question. I'm going to look. Like, I feel like Mew learns everything, but are there any, like, physical dark or fire attacks that it gets? Let's see. <laughs> I like how we're looking this up now. <laughs> uh, physical dark or fire. 
It gets brutal swing. Bulldogs. Yeah, okay. That hit his partner as well, brutal swing. Oh, does it? Okay. It gets knockoff too. Yeah, earthquake knockoff. Nothing that immediately threatens Metagross. Fire punch. So in Psychic Terrain, Zen Headbutt does minimum 75 to 88% to a non invested Raikou as well. Okay. But Raikou, I mean, nothing on that side resists Psychic. So if we just do that, then that kind of works. But Mew is kind of threatening Volcarona now as well in Psychic Terrain. Probably yeah. Faster. There. We basically need to get uh, the Sharpedo out safely. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm thinking I'll probably send Headbutt into the Raikou. I like that. And I'm thinking of just Wound Blasting. Into the Mew. Or into Raikou so we get that out the way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. They're, they don't have any Fairy because it's that side either. If it is Assault Vested... Okay, they switch out. Feeny probably? It is, yeah. That's okay. I mean, this is this is putting it in range of minus one gigavolt habit. Right. So we've got Z Thunder on this delay as well. Ah. Uh, and bulk up. Ooh, okay. That's interesting. I mean, the special attack drop would be nice here. Bit of luck, please. No, no cost for that. No, no. <laughs> uh, I don't think it matters too much, honestly. No, I think that's a nice junk. But, oh, I mean, if this Mew has got knockoff, then that's actually pretty nasty. Hmm. I'm thinking you want to protect Metagross this turn for sure. I wonder if the Zed Thunder gets Finny through Protect. No, it won't, will it? Because it normally does about 100% and we're at minus one. Yeah. So, yeah, it won't. Hmm. But if they're Barry, for example, they're thinking, oh, we can live a Moonblast, heal back up, and get an attack off. Yeah, yeah. Like, Mew isn't... Um, I suppose Mew is a bit of a threat, seeing as, like, its bulk ups is going to put it out of range of crunch. Right. I just... I'm thinking we want to conserve the Metagross because it checks the Snorlax and can deal damage against Raikou. Yes. Yeah, Metagross is good here. So that's why I'm thinking protecting and Z-moving to get Feeny out the way. Yeah. Mainly because Feeny does threaten into Sharpedo. A Moonblast isn't going to get Feeny, is it? it? It'll be close. Yeah, I don't think it would. Like, we've got Zed Thunder on it for a reason, so I suppose we might as well use it. I think it's relatively safe just to protect and Zed Thunder into Feeny. I think so too, yeah. We we'll get to see who's faster than you as well, because we haven't got any speed. Ah. Oh, okay. Well, if you get the critical hit through Protect, then that'd be nice. <laughs> but interesting that they felt the Finny was threatened there. Um, I mean, okay, it is with a double, but... Battle Claw! Okay. I'm just going to calculate that now. New. So surely they have Drain Plunge as their last one, I would imagine. Shadow Claw to our Metagross at plus one does about 40%. Does that have a berry? Yeah. Ah. That's frustrating. That was a nice call in there, Ren. Yeah. How much did you say it did? So Metagross about 40, 40 to 45%. 40 to 45. So we can live that easily. Yeah. I want to start getting damage on this Mew for Sharpedo. But the Feeny now is a problem, too. Hmm. Yeah, a plus one, a crunch might not... I mean, it is still a, a roll, but crunch might not knock Mew out at plus one defense. I think we'll want some chip damage onto it. It would be handy, but this Finny is an issue as well, isn't it? Because we've got... Well, Volcarona in the back, Need the Queen in the back. Yeah, yeah that was a good, that was a really good protect on their end. Yeah, we I didn't, didn't think they'd go for it. Deal with this Finny. I mean, it's tempting to, what, go for just a double into the Finny, maybe? 
Yeah. Because Crunch is still a roll on you from, from this point. It's just if they can knock out Metagross with a Shadow Claw and like Muddy Water. Yeah, yeah, that is the that is the concern, isn't it? But it looked pretty bulky given how well it took that Thunder. I guess we're at minus one, but yeah, we are kind of bulky. I I don't mind doubling into Feeny here. I think. With okay. Hmm. I like doubling into Feeny. Okay. Are you thundering or are you moonblasting? I'm gonna moonblast. So here's the shadow claw. Okay. So that didn't do too much. And here's the muddy water. Don't miss it. Don't avoid it, unfortunately. And that doesn't. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here oh, we go. come on! Here we go. <laughs> This has been a wonderful season, hasn't it? Oh my god. I mean, the Moonblast, look, looking at that Moonblast probably would have not been I'm, I'm fairly confident it would have. Yeah. Okay, let's we see, just, let's oh, see. We can't get anything this year, can we? So what do they do now? Muddy Water and Shadow Claw Lele, I think. Yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, and there's nothing that we can do to really stop that, is there? Um, well, we could switch into Sharpedo, but that goes to crud if they end up just Moonblasting the Lele. But I don't think I feel like that is just a super safe move for them to do. I don't I don't see why they'd do anything else because Metagross can't switch, you know, Volcarona into a muddy water. Um, like else, we're just losing Pokemon this turn. And yeah. Like maybe okay. So the alternative is I protect Metagross. You get Sharpie to win as we sacrifice the lay. That's the alternative. Or I could just hard switch Lele into a Torpedo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's lame. I mean, uh, at, at, at that point, I'm thinking it's a risk, but we probably need to make the risk. I think so too. Um, uh, do we need to right now? Yeah, it's like your side is pretty heavily damaged. Like the crit didn't help our case. Yeah, this this muddy water is just gonna go through my my side. I've got Metagross in range and Volcarona in range. Um, I'm thinking maybe I just want to sack, but may I think it's better to switch out here. I mean, if we do, then Sharpedo, actually, we, we don't threaten the Finny still, do we? I'm going to Moonblast, actually, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I think it probably is better just to, to try and get the Moonblast off. I mean, yeah. this Lele is a bulky Lele as well, so we might even survive the Shadow Claw and the Moonblast. But yeah, there's, there's no way that they weren't doing this. So we're going to hit? Yeah, of course they hit. Okay. <sighs> We did run her slower Lele here too, so that kind of cost us a little bit. Um, I'm definitely bringing Sharpedo out now. Yeah. But, I mean, they're gonna have <laughs> they're gonna have Moonblast on their Finny, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, if we had Bullet Punch, then we could maybe get the Finny, but we don't. Oh, um, let's think. If I Mega Evolve, I don't want to Mega Evolve turn one and probably want to protect. What if you got a double? As you did what? Well, I need the speed boost right now, right? Well, it depends if the Mew is jolly or not. If the Mew is jolly, then we are faster. Good I mean, point. If, if the Mew is adamant, rather, we are faster right now. I'm thinking maybe our way out of this is if... We are just faster, we outspeed, get the roll on Crunch, knock out. Feeny knocks out Sharpedo, we knock out Feeny, and suddenly it's a three on three. And then we have Needle Queen to deal with Steelix, Metagross to deal with Snorlax, and Metagross to deal with um, the Raikou. I mean, Metagross is just going to go down to any hit from the Raikou, isn't it? Oh, sorry. Um, like, if it's Steelix and Raikou, then Needle Queen threatens both with the one shot. Although, I guess they could Snarl. Ah, uh, this is tricky. I kind of want to just crunch into Mew. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's... I don't see any other alternative. I'm gonna go for it. So 
I mean, if they're jolly mood, they, they will just have feeders anyway. But, I mean, if you protect it, I would have been losing Metagross, and then it would have been a really a losing game at that point anyway. So they are faster. They are jolly, actually. Mm. So, yeah. So they might be losing Mew, but we are going to be losing Sharpie to you as well. And if we were, oh wow, so they've got some bulk in there. And if we were, if we were jolly, we would have outsped, but wouldn't have even knocked it out as well. So. Yeah. Well, oh well, we survived. Wow. Sharpedo has some bulk, apparently. The protect play they made on Feeny was a really good one. Yeah, that's, that's done it, hasn't it? That changed a lot. Because we lost Raichu so early. Yeah, I mean, that crit obviously didn't help, but I don't want to complain about that right now. Yeah. Yeah, the Finny just <laughs> but, but luck certainly has not been in our favor this entire season, that's for sure. Yeah, so. um, but let's see. I mean, <laughs> now we know the Mew is faster. Like, it can literally just attack into either of us and, <laughs> and knock us out. We know that the... Um, well, we do have Aqua Jet, right? Oh, yeah, we do have Aqua Jet, yeah. I just don't know if that's enough to knock it out. I'd be sur I don't think it will. Well, I don't think we have any alternative. Yeah. On, like, protect the Charpedo and then... Just letting, letting the Volcarona go down. But we haven't got, like, Giga Drain or anything to hit the Finny with either. Yeah. Hmm. That's a shame. Poison Jab on Torpedo could have saved us, too. Yeah. Um, I think here I gotta go for the Aqua Jet crit into Mew. Yeah, I mean, you'd expect the Finny to muddy water here, wouldn't you? Yeah. So maybe we do need the Aqua Jet critical hit and two avoids. Because, like, okay, so if I protect my Volcarona, you'll get a switch into an Queen, but then we're still going nowhere with that, aren't we? Yeah. I was, yeah. I didn't think they'd go bulky berry if you need to. I was thinking a Z move on it would make a lot of sense here. Given that, that means like Snorlax probably has the Z move on that side. Yeah, it's yeah, maybe Z stockpile. Yeah, I'm gonna Aqua Jet, but I don't think it knocks out me, but I gotta go for the crit, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least we we're, we're worrying about the talent play. At least we got the knockout on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah. Yeah, nowhere near. I mean, the plus one, we might survive this. We are bulky. No, we don't. Okay. <laughs> and then I can just switch out the, um, the, the Mew for the resistance as well. Oh, there we go. Hitting all the muddy water, too. Yeah, I'm thinking, like, without the crit, and if we survive that, because I think the roll is heavily in our favor, and without the miss... The game would be a lot more even, but unfortunately, uh, both of those happened. Yeah, this, like, just by the way, our Raichu had, like, literally no investment in special attack. It was all full. Yeah, it was, like, max HP, max defense with the berry. Yeah. Specifically to deal with Talonflame, and the fact that it was able to knock us out meant that we didn't have the protection for everything else on my side. Which is a shame. Um, well, now we're just thinking battle differential. Oh, man, that's so frustrating. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Okay, I think, I don't know, maybe we didn't give the Finny enough respect, like, we did we did go with the Z-Thunder in the end, but... Like, yeah, if I, like, thundered, like, went for the Z-Thunder, the turn it switched in, because we were pretty confident that was going to switch. I mean, I was fine with that turn, I just think, yeah, we should have thought about Protect a little bit more, I just thought, like, it was in a position where it didn't have to worry about much, but I guess even a Psychic or a Fairy Z move from Lele would get the knockout onto Finny. I mean, there's, there's, there's clearly something fundamentally wrong with the, the team that we've got, I think. Like, I've, I'm not convinced that the, the draft has been great. Like, I feel like we haven't got any fast Pokemon that can threaten stuff like Raikou that are mildly fast, faster than our stuff, and we can't have a Trick Room mode either because we haven't really got anything too slow. Right. Uh, or any Trick Room setters. So, I don't know, I just, it's, it's frustrating. I mean, I feel like we're good players, and even though we haven't got the best team, we probably can. Um, win some games here, but it's all these things going against us as well. It's not helping. I think part of it is like we don't have uh, too much flexibility with some of our stuff. Um, 
So, and, and like, unlike previous years where you had a zoom roll, that was a very clear win condition, whereas, like, if we set it up, we'll just win. Um, and in yeah. this one, like, our, our top tier picks, like, we, we were all the way in the middle of the draft, and we didn't utilize that position well enough. Yeah, we've got no... no... I think, if anything, I can at least bring it down to threefold. I'll just Earth Power Steelix twice, but, um... Yeah, there's no clear win condition. Our things like do damage don't really do enough. Um, oh, Steelix is sturdy, right? Yeah, it'll be sturdy. Yeah. So, well played on there, and I think their team was pretty tough to prep for, and they do have a Z move here. What is it? Normalium. It must be the Snorlax. Yeah. Wow, the Snorlax is faster than the Steelix. Well, who's it? It's the speed tie, isn't it? I think they're both 30. Um, but this game, yeah, losing that <laughs> Breakneck Blitz, that's kind of cool. Instead of Pulverizing Pancake. <laughs> okay. Missed opportunity there, look at the pancake -tus. So, good game to Joey and Envy. Um, they definitely played well, I think. We thought the matchup was pretty tricky, so our best solution to it was that Raichu, but the fact that it just went down the way they made it instantly more difficult. Uh, they made a great call protecting the Feeny, uh, blowing our Z move, uh, so the Feeny became far more of a problem. I think Snarl, we didn't expect it to do as much. My regret was not staying in with the uh, Sharpedo, but like Baz mentioned, we were really worried about Discharge, um, which just blows through the the Sharpedo. It didn't look like they had it, ultimately. Or maybe maybe they did. Uh, hard to say for sure. But Sharpedo could have put in a lot of work if we just stayed in in the beginning. And we didn't find out what ability I think Talonflame was, but uh, if it wasn't Gale Wings, Aqua Jet could have potentially just sniped the Talonflame immediately. We saw it, I think... Um... I think we saw it was slower than the Raikou, actually. One right, time. right. So, like, they, they must have had some bulk in it, but they still went down to a minus one hidden power rock from, like, 80%. So, I'm not sure what that talent playing was. Yeah, hard to say. Um, really wish we would have seen how it would have played out if Raichu doesn't go down there, because if we survive, it eats the berry, heals all the way back up, can survive another Flare Blitz from the Talonflame. We get the Thunderbolt chip damage onto Talonflame as well. Um, but so that was kind of a bummer. Um, luck definitely hasn't been in our favor, but I think our draft this year is easily our, the worst out of the three we have. And I think Baz and I really need to look at what we can do to fix it. Um, yeah, me, the, the frustrating thing is like due to our position, um, if it, if it was like the top tier picks, like, like Lele is not an S tier pick compared to, or I mean, obviously it's S tier, but it doesn't do nearly as much as something like Feeny or Snorlax. For example, on Joey's end, or if you look at the other teams, uh, it's like some of the Megas. So the draft makes it frustrating. Uh, some poor luck definitely hasn't helped our favor. Um, this week is one of those where I feel kind of bad, but also uh, it's one where it could have been significantly closer, but I still feel like they had the upper edge anyway, and the matchup was already tricky enough. So I think we really need to reassess what we can do better since obviously uh, we're not content with where our position is, but yeah. not giving up quite yet. There's still more than half the season to go. I mean, I think... Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I don't think Lele is by you know by a long way one of the best S picks that 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 was there at the start of the draft. Obviously, we had a pretty poor draft position as well. But also, I think we've maybe tried to um, go in the same vein as our previous um, season's team. And just because like most of our team that did work last year was changed from uh, B tier to A tier, we've kind of picked things that don't really work as well instead and we've just got this team that can't set up can't really threaten and isn't really fast and isn't really slow and just kind of sits there and is maybe a bit more predictable <laughs> so yeah so like i don't know I, I think the predictability is definitely a big thing uh we've been using relatively similar sets and the one like the couple of times you do try to get creative like choice card volcarona or the right you would follow me uh <laughs> I mean, just looking at, like, we, we could, I mean, we do still have three trades. We could, like, trade Lele for Mega Blaziken or Mega Lucario or, or um, Ash Greninja, Darkrai, Genesect, Hooper Unbound. Yeah, I, I think the frustrating thing is, like, there's, you can tell why the better S picks are so prioritized, and that's because they're really bulky as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's... Like, Mega, like, wouldn't, it'd be lo we'd love to have, like, a, a Mega Charizard X or a Kieran White or... Or, you know, a Feeny or something right now. A Mega Mawile, even. But Yeah. yeah. But I, I think we, we definitely didn't draft, given our position. Uh, first three weeks, I was pretty okay with how they went in terms of play. Like, the first week, obviously, we just got caught off guard by one thing. And then against uh, the Drinking Birds, like... Um, the Overheat. Yeah. But, but last week, we just got completely caught off guard. This week, I don't know. I, I feel like we had... 
like it was like a tricky matchup so things need to go right and the fact that you know we got crit on something that's probably more in our favor and uh, muddy water plus a void like even if i mean even if we don't get that accuracy drop like they're still probably in a pretty good position so it still would have been really tricky especially um bulk of mu was cool too they i know they used that in previous weeks but uh, our Mew answers weren't that great, especially yeah. since we did forego the Z move on Volcarona, which initially was one of our better answers against it. I, um, mean, I, I, I don't feel like we've complained enough about this Moonblast miss, actually, because like if that did knock out the, the Finny, as it probably did, that would have, like, <laughs> Volcarona would have been free. Um, you know, Nida Queen would have been a lot more freer, like, Metagross would have been a lot freer. If we'd knocked that Finny out, then it would have been a, a very, very different game as well. Yeah, um, but ultimately I feel like we were playing slightly from behind, mainly because we didn't know what sets to anticipate, and I think that was the biggest deal. Um, and that's one of the weaknesses of our draft. Um, and I think Joey and MV easily have one of the best drafts. I was looking at their like all the drafts total, and I think like theirs is so strong because like Mew, Snorlax, and Finny is like an incredible core, both in BGC. And obviously, like, some of them are banned in doubles OU as well. And, like, there's so much flexibility where you could run Z, Feeny. Snorlax could run so many different sets as Joey and Envy have done. Um, Mew is literally one of the most versatile Pokemon. Like, last year, we had the advantage of Jirachi, which, you know, I think we used pretty well. We used, like, all kinds of different sets. But, yeah, we're definitely going to have to look back at our draft. Um, and we're probably going to have to do some replacements because right now it's just not cutting it against the top-tier teams, uh, even if we do prep. And... It's a shame. I wish like we could have seen how this game would have played out without, you know, the RNG because then it could have at least given us a better gauge of what we need to fix. Um, but sometimes it is just that way. But they played really well. I think they came with a really, really good team as well. We kind of got rolled over. The combination of bad luck didn't really help us much either. But we just got to look towards the next couple of weeks. Our schedule doesn't get much easier. We got Ray Drive and Dream Ball in the next two weeks. So, uh, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the, the, the half... It was like the first couple of weeks were really you know against slightly lower ranked opponents potentially and then we dropped the ball on a couple of those and then now we've got like the tougher opponents and then the end of the league uh it's against teams that right now are in the middle to lower of the pack but we do need wins like very quickly now if we want to make playoffs yeah yeah i mean i don't know i'm the, the thing of the thing that i'm not happy about is that even if we do want to trade something there's not really anything there's nothing to trade for yeah exactly yeah. I, I guess if anything we need to just figure something that suits maybe our play style a little bit better something like can maybe sweep uh, like something that gives us more clear win conditions because right now we're just kind of going with whatever um mega aerodactyl is left in the a's mega latios is in the a's that's interesting i think we should definitely look towards those yeah like sharpedo and glalie are fun but they just don't cut it because they're so frail like we could trade like the, another frustrating thing about this is that we can only do one trade a week so like maybe one week we we trade raichu for mega latios and then the next week we trade him only for pikachu or something like that yeah um i don't know i suppose we'll have to think about it and, and uh, <laughs> apologies for everyone who was supporting us this year <laughs> yeah i mean this week was one where i don't feel like we necessarily played terribly like i don't think we made any bad calls but uh, a bad team matchup versus a really good team slash some slight unfortunate RNG makes it a lot more difficult. And so they were really able to run over us after that. Um, but we'll definitely not give up and reassess moving forward because we know we're good enough. It's just we need to find something that fits us a little bit better. Um, and so we'll look towards winning the next couple of weeks. But thank you guys, as always, for watching. Uh, shout out to Joey and Envy, as always. Shout out to Baz. And we'll catch you guys next time. Yeah, bye for now. All right.